Hello, welcome to the Cyborg Game of the Star City Games .com, New Jersey Invitational, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller alongside Brad Nelson. How are you doing, sir? I'm wonderful. Yourself? Pretty good. It's been a while since you've been at an Invitational. Yeah, I've missed the last three, actually. I was, I was really excited to come here. Come back in roaring force, well, off to a hot 9-0 start. Well, since uh, the last Players' Champs, I found myself not winning it and not qualified. And I didn't get many opportunities this year to play in tournaments, so I'm really looking at this Invitational and the one in December as PCQs. Yes. Yeah. You named it on Twitter at the PCQ, yep. first championship qualifier. Yep. <laughs> of course, gunning for your second token as well in a second oh, yeah, Invitational get one. title. Yeah, that's so. awesome. I, oh, I haven't even put much thought into that. Uh, hmm. So we're excited for that. You are so far 5-0 in Modern. You're mm -hmm. playing the Death Shadow aggro deck. Uh, a lot of buzz has been around about this deck, and there's a lot of ways you can build this deck and mm -hmm. play this deck. We want to talk to you why you're playing the deck and why this build. Well, I originally started playing the deck um, about a month before this Invitational. I was front-loading a lot of my testing for this Invitational before um, Eldritch, Moon came, Eldritch Moon came out, mm -hmm. and I was starting to Pro Tour test. So once I got back from the Pro Tour, I got in, I'd say, like six leagues with the deck, and it's super fast on Magic Online to, to get a league in with this deck. Yeah. Um, but the reason I started playing it is because I joined Team Eureka, and Eureka is the Suicide Zoo team. They played it at uh, Pro Tour Atlanta. I think it was Atlanta. Yeah, the pretty modern, sure. The last yeah, modern the, Pro The last modern one, the Eldrazi one, um, where they got Chalice to Oblivion. <laughs> but they, they kept playing the deck, and after that deck got banned, and Chalice really wasn't that around in like a lot of main decks, the, the deck is just awesome, and it won, I think, four WMCQs for Team Eureka, beating teammates in the finals. Um, and Magic Online is really ripe with hate for this deck. Uh, you see a lot of dredge decks with like fair, Vengeful Pharaohs and or engineered explosives in the sideboards, but this deck isn't in America. Like, people are not really uh, concerned about it. They kind of ignore it. It's like a gentleman's agreement that one of the best decks in the format just won't exist. <laughs> um, and so with the, the push from Eureka, I started testing this deck. They, I, uh, I uh, used them as mentors and confidants, and, and they really like honed in on like not only the deck list, but to teach me all the, like, the unique things the deck can do. Um, and I was really excited to come to this tournament with this deck. I thought I was gonna do really well with it. And uh, I'm, I'm so far so good. Right. When you see Brad Nelson very prepared for a tournament, <laughs> you need to be scared. Because oh, the last time I remember you preparing super hard was the first Players' Championship, yep. and you obliterated that tournament. And you said, well, I put in a lot of work here. So far, you're killing it here as well. Yeah. I, I, I did test a ton of Magic Online for this event. Um, the girlfriend was not pleased since uh, <laughs> after this I'm heading to Seattle for Worlds. She's going to meet me there in a couple weeks. but. I just left for two weeks. I came back for 10 days. I tested a bunch. I mean, I'm not a bad boyfriend, but <laughs> she, she wasn't too happy. Life of the professional magic yep. player, though. All right, let's talk about the deck here because, you know, uh, there's been a lot of iterations, people trying out different colors, you know, the Grixis build, the Norwood Dryads, these things. You have the, you know, I guess you would call it the traditional Swiss Spear, Wild McCattle, Death Shadow, and the Step Links creature package. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'd like to say is new does not mean good. And uh, just because there are new iterations of this deck that you can play like the Dryad or Traverse or Metamorphose or all these things, doesn't mean that's what you're trying to do. Like Steplings is not a good magic card anymore. And, and I'm not gonna defend it. But when you have 57 really good cards for a deck and you just need one more thing to, to be the worst version of something, it's fine. Sure. And so like Steplings is a good one drop. It usually dies, especially because it's on turn one. It's gonna lose value as the game progresses but it's gonna deal the most damage right away, so they're gonna use their limited removal spells on it. Um, but the rest of the deck is, I, I really love the, at least 55. I don't know if the two bolts are correct, but I wouldn't play all the unique stuff. I think that the stock, low to the ground, 15 one drops, nothing cute, get them dead strategy for this deck is the best. Like, this is modern and this deck rides the wave. Like, not only with its life total, but with the format itself. Right, so you have a ton of ways to lose life. Of course, you're shock fetching basically all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have things like Street Wraith, Attachment Probe, Thought Seize to help hurt your life. Total. Lightning lightning Bolt, I've done that a couple times. Bolting yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you have all these ways to kind of interact, see what's going on, and draw extra cards. And then you set up for the combo kill of Become Immense, Team of Battle Rage, and Mutagenic Growth. Yep. All right, so talk about you know riding the wave. Uh, kind of the scenarios here where you have to balance your life total or just, you know, not care about your life total. Well, when I started testing the deck, I thought there was a really high barrier to entry. 
Uh, and I was intimidated so that I could actually test it for Last Worlds. I was testing with Ari Lax and Ari was interested in this deck and I'm like, I can't learn that, that is too hard to play. And so, once I started playing it, I actually figured out that it's not that difficult to play. <laughs> it's <laughs> going on. My, a friend of mine is trolling me right now, I'm sorry. Um, the deck is not that difficult to play and even though you're losing a bunch of life over and over again and you're getting really close to death, it's so early in the game that no one really can capitalize on it. Maybe infect with flyers and cranial platings and that's why that might be a bad matchup. Um, but like the, the mid-range decks of the format, like what's a just guy control deck gonna do when you're at like seven life? I mean, maybe they triple bolt you, sure. but, but you, you don't really win the game on turn five or six, you win it on three and four. And so like in those first four turns, the life loss isn't scary. Like I can show you my notepad from this tournament, I'm 5-0 and my life totals are two, four, five, three, <laughs> five. Like it, it doesn't matter, you, you kill them really quickly. Okay. How is the burn matchup? Because everyone here is like, well, burn has got a lot of ways to deal you damage. Hurting yourself could be dangerous. Or are they just kind of helping you? It, both. Um, I think that matchup, at least from Eureka's standpoint, I've only played it a handful of times. I, I'm not really comfortable with it. I don't have any hate for it in the sideboard because burn is the kind of deck I'm going to ignore when my goal is to qualify for the Players' Champs. And I don't. I just don't expect if I make top eight to play against burn. I wanted to make sure I had tools to beat like Eldrazi and dredge and stuff like that but that matchup pretty much comes down to how good they are if they're playing perfectly because I, it's hard to look at a death shadow and know what to do <laughs> it really is <laughs> the math is just uh anything it could like they could attack you for two or 22 you just don't know and so like if they help you out that might be like like two damage might not kill you giving them uh plus two plus two but three might be just enough Sure. with a team or battle rage and maybe one other thing so you really never know it comes down to how good they are and how good the draws are i think they're favored um by i, I, I guess they are favored but uh who cares about burn as soon, just as let as burn kill you everyone's afraid of losing a burn or mad about losing a burn just let lava spike kill you every once in a while it's okay as someone who's really been grinding this deck what are some of the tricks that people might not be aware of that this deck can do so what are some of the cool like insider lines? Well, one of the cool insider lines is you like when I started testing the deck, I always thought that like the trick, the bobble, was a cantrip. It could help with prowess. It could help with delve. Um, but uh, you would just like point it at them with a probe, and then you'd have perfect information for two turns. But one of the early things is you'll look at an opening hand uh, that needs like maybe one thing to be perfect or one thing to function really well, and you have a bobble and a cantrip, and you have fetch lands. You can look at your top card or library as an effective scry. If it's a card you want, you cycle immediately. If it's not a card you want, you fetch cycle. Right, we saw uh, that on camera in one of your matches. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a little trick. Um, I, don't, I can't think of any offhand. Sequencing's really important, but that's all situational because it's modern, there's 50 decks. Sure. Uh, so that takes, mastering the deck will take a long time. Learning the deck, it's not that difficult like the like it is a, a very complex deck to play but you're not going to pick it up and just like not be able to at least start functioning like you'll learn as you go it, it's not going to take like 50 matches then you're like oh now i think i can be okay at the deck yeah the concept is there you're attacking yes. people and making creatures very large that, that, that very that's quickly. exactly correct I, I i think that people just didn't pick this deck up in, in the u.s um because they were just like I was scared to play something this complex, playing like all one drops. You, it's it's like infect, but you have to deal twenty and not ten. And but after playing with the deck, I think it is most likely the best deck in the format. I, I really do believe it is just the best deck. And I could see one of the cards that are universally like in it be banned eventually, so it's not a thing. Well, your sideboard has a lot of one of, so just kind of go over some of the key cards in here. We don't need to go over all of them, but you've got multiple paths, multiple inquisitions, multiple hooting mandrels, and just a slew of one ofs. Okay, um, one ofs are pretty self explanatory. I like a Stony Silence because it also acts as something against Bant Eldrazi to beat um, Engineer Explosives and Spell Sky, but it's a good affinity card, but Ancient Grudge is better, so if you don't have any Bant Eldrazi in your format, just play Ancient Grudges. Um, Tarmogoyf 2 Hoodie Mandrills and Rager of Aos are for your mid-range matchups, the ones where they have removal spells. Um, you just bring in some extra creatures, Ranger of Aos. Obviously with the force come in against Path to Exile. I have a Nihil Spellbomb and a Cage. Um, Cage is better against Dredge, but Nihil Spellbomb um, 
is good against company decks. So I just wanted 1-1, one, because one, they both can be good if they don't have an interrupt decay. Uh, and the Path to Exiles are in the sideboard pretty much only for like hyper-aggressive other combo decks like the Mirror, Infect, Affinity, um, and also Bant Eldrazi, because they have Spell Skites and Dot Nut Seers, um, and uh, Smashers and Drowners, sure. whatever, just a bunch of annoying cards. Yeah. Um, but I don't bring them in against like, uh, against Jund, I, that's why I have the one Dismember, that's for Jund. Alright. Well, the deck looks great. You're killing it in all formats. You're 5-0 in Modern. Mm -hmm. Got a, got another Invitational Top 8 on the horizon. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Brad, I mean, that's for... that's the goal, man. Like, <laughs> I, I came into this thing so I can go back to Player Champs and dunk on Jim Davis because he stole that one from me <laughs> and I want it back. Alright, Jim, he's coming for you. Brad, thanks for joining me on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all week long for the action here in New Jersey.